بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دس از سیکنڈ پارٹ آف دی انکلوزنگ اسپونڈولائٹس ایز وی نو دس از اے سیرو نگیٹو کرونک انٹریبیٹری ڈیزیز پروسیس وچ انوالوس سافٹ ٹیشوز لائک لیگمنٹس ٹینڈنس اینڈ جوائنٹ کیپسولز وائل بونز اینڈ جوائنٹس آر آلسو انوالوڈ بونز اینڈ جوائنٹس ویئر ابو اسٹرکچرز آر انوالوڈ اور اٹیچڈ آر آلسو انوالوڈ ان دس ڈیزیز پروسیس This has active and inactive disease phases. MRI is the best modality for the assessment of the active disease component. Late changes in the healed phase of the disease can be seen both on CT and X-ray. Role of imaging modalities and stage of the disease that is active disease and inactive disease. MRI especially T2 weighted fat saturation your fat expression sequence is the best for the assessment of the active disease process where we can see increased signals are noted to in diffuse the swollen tendons ligaments and capsules while similar increased signals are also appreciated in the bony portions where these portions or these structures are attached similarly increased signals are also appreciated around joints that is in subarticular that is in a subarticular surfaces this active inflammatory phase cannot be confidently commented with the help of x-ray and ct so that's why we use mri to assess active disease component in the early stages late phase or inactive phase of the disease shows ossification in ligaments and less fibrosis of the discs and around joints while bones and the joint shows erosions and sclerosis leading to ultimate ankylosis this phase of the disease can be assessed better with the help of x-rays and ct scan as we know that uh, 80% of the cases axial skeleton is involved in this disease while uh, in 20% of the cases peripheral or appendicular skeleton is involved this is an example where we see that Uh, this is axial skeleton we can see SA joints in it which are more frequently involved in the disease process similarly in, supraspinous ligament interspinous ligaments facet joints and uh, end plates they are especially involved in this disease process here we can see green areas show bony attachment of uh, different ligaments so we see inflammatory changes in the ligaments or tendons and in these bony areas here we can see inflammatory changes in uh, supraspinous ligament this is sagittal t1 weighted sequence where we can see this is thick supraspinous ligament and this one is uh, sagittal t1 fat expression post contrast image where we can see there is uh, diffuse post contrast enhancement involving uh, part of the interspinous ligament and supraspinous ligament suggesting inflammatory changes or uh, enthesitis in these two ligaments another example where we can see this is t2 weighted sequence and uh, this one is uh, fat expression post contrast sagittal sequence we can see there is a uh, thickened anterior longitudinal ligament with increased signals in it suggesting inflammatory changes while inflammatory changes are also appreciated in adjacent corners of uh, lumbar vertebrae similarly we see that there is post contrast enhancement in interspinous ligament and uh, supraspinous ligament similarly mild diffuse post contrast enhancement is also appreciated in ligamentum flavum all and in uh, corners of uh, lumbar vertebrae which are showing inflammatory changes these are all 
fat special post contrast images showing uh, diffuse ligamentous inflammatory changes with post contrast enhancement this is supraspinous ligament which is thickened and inflamed and shows post contrast enhancement similarly we can see post contrast enhancement in interspinous ligament and ligamentum flavum same interspinous ligaments are showing post contrast enhancement on coronal images and this is axial post contrast image where we can see inflammatory changes and post contrast enhancement involving interspinous ligament and uh, ligamentum flavum similar changes are noted in anterior longitudinal ligament so this is uh, an example of uh, inflammatory process involving ligaments here we can see that this is uh, gluteus medius muscle and it is the tendinous attachment on iliac bone which is showing increased signals in it favoring inflammatory process another example where we can see this is greater trochanter and uh, increased signals are noted in ligaments and tendons attached on this portion of the bone suggesting inflammatory changes here we can see this is a uh, coronal t2 fat special sequence where uh, increased signals are noted in uh, scaltibrosties and tendons of the hamstring muscles favoring inflammatory process same example where we can see inflammatory changes involving hamstring tendons and scaltibrosties in the shape of increased signals in both these areas this is the active early phase of the disease while in the late healed phase we see ossification and calcification of the tendinous insertion sites suggesting whiskering of the scaltibrosties here we can see there is bony ankylosis of the both SA joints which are fused together here we can see inflammatory process involving uh, tendons of iliopsoas muscles and in uh, lesser trochanter similarly inflammatory changes are noted in the scaltibrosty and tendons of the hamstring muscles here we have an example where we can see this is tendon of the HLS which is swollen and thickened and here we can see there is mild irregularity that is erosion and uh, decreased signals are noted in adjacent portion of the bones while uh, this is bursa which is thickened as well and here on fair special titubated sequence we can see there is fluid in the bursa suggesting inflammatory process mild inflammatory changes are noted in adjacent upper posterior aspect of the calcaneum including inflamed tendon of HLS which is thickened and shows increased signals this is an example of uh, foot where we can see inflammatory changes are noted uh, in inferior surface of the calcaneum where uh, plantar fascia is attached another example where we can see plantar fascia is uh, thickened with increased signals in its surrounding and within its substance while subtle increased signals are also appreciated in a bony portion where uh, plantar fascia is attached suggesting uh, inflammatory process in these two areas this is an example where we have um, axial fat special titubated sequence through base of the pelvis both the pubic bones and scatibrosties are inflamed as increased signals are noted in these areas while we can see surrounding tendons and ligaments are also inflamed another example where we can see this is uh, shoulder where we can see inflammatory changes are noted in supraspinatus tendon and uh, at the site of its bony attachment involving uh, head of the humerus which is inflamed and showing uh, increased signals here we have uh, 
spine of the scapula showing inflammatory changes in the shape of increased signals while adjacent attached deltoid muscle also shows increased signal favoring inflammatory changes here we see this is uh, AC joint showing increased signals with irregular margins and uh, thick sounding ligaments favoring inflammatory process in the AC joint as well this is an example of uh, spine where we see abnormal inflammatory changes are noted in the shape of increased signals on T2 weighted uh, images. These are basically T2 fat expression sequences. And uh, here we can see inflammatory changes in corners of uh, vertebrae. So this is called Ruminous lesion and uh, these increased signals shows low signals on T1 weighted sequence. So these are active ruminous lesion involving uh, corners of the bones. Here the healing process that is uh, inactive ruminous lesion where healing process has settled in the bone. Inflammatory changes which showed increased signals on MRI is showing sclerosis now in this x-ray and adjacent portion of the disc that is outermost portion of the disc which is endless fibrosis shows ossification or calcification suggesting syndesmophyte formation which is bridging the two vertebrae leading to bamboo spine appearance here on sagittal T1 beta sequence this healed sclerotic bony area shows uh, fatty deposition which gives increased signals on T1-weighted images. And this is sagittal deformating of CT scan where uh, we can see shiny corner sign that is sclerotic component of inflammatory disease process in adjacent corners of the vertebrae, mild eroded area can also be seen in present study. These sclerotic portion shows fatty deposition on T1 weighted images and here we can see this is bony ankylosis of the facet joints. So these are all post inflammatory fatty changes on T1 weighted sequence. Sclerosis and ankylosis Another example where we can see sclerotic changes are shiny corners which are the second phase of uh, inflammatory process involving these corners. Mild irregularity is also appreciated in adjacent portion of uh, end plates. Here we can see inflammatory changes are noted in the shape of increased signals involving uh, subchondral areas of SI joints on either side especially on right side while similar inflammatory changes are appreciated in interior as well as posterior corners of uh, dorsal vertebrae. These are all active disease component of uh, ankylosing spondylitis. Here we can see inflamed bony portions in spinous processes are noted. Same inflammatory process is noted in facet joints in the shape of increased signals on T2 fat expression sequence. Similarly, here we can see this is uh, costal vertebral joint shows showing increased signals as well, favoring inflammatory process. This is axial image where we can see this is posterior end of the rib and it articulates with the adjacent portion of the vertebra and diffuse Inflammatory process is appreciated in this joint as well. Here we can see inflammatory changes are noted involving uh, vertebral corners anteriorly and posteriorly, including uh, facet joints. This is extension of the disease from corners into central portion along end plates, favoring Anderson lesion. It is a non-infective disease component. Here we can see this is uh, 
cycles mine where uh, we have uh, syndesmophytes leading to bony ankylosis of the cervical spine and this is extra of the lumbosacral spine where we can see syndesmophytes all along margins of the vertebrae this is because of ossification of outer fibers of annulus fibrosis and uh, undulating contour due to these syndesmophytes gives an appearance of bamboo spine so it gives an appearance of bamboo spine because of uh, undulating margin generated by the bridging osteophytes or syndesmophytes and here we can see there is bony ankylosis of both SA joints these are the inactive late phase of the disease which are better visualized with x-ray here we have another x-ray where we can see there is squaring of the vertebrae and we can see some dysmophytes and here there is uh, sclerotic corners which we label as shiny corners so all these features favors ankylosing spondylitis another example we can see these are syndesmophytes here we can see ligamentous ossification in involving interspinous ligaments while there is uh, evidence of fused facet joints here we can see there is squaring of the vertebra these are all typical features on x-ray this is 3d reformatting where we can see there is uh, fused dorsal vertebrae here we have uh, centesmophytes on the margins of the discs this is chronal reformatting and this one is the sagittal reformatting where we can see centesmophytes this is an example of the dagger sign we can see linear increased density area in frontal view of the spine and this increased density area is basically because of ossification of uh, interspinous and supraspinous ligaments and uh, here we can see there is bony ankylosis of both SA joints another example of the dagger sign which is noted on the AP view and uh, here we can see there is bony ankylosis so both are the late phases of the disease this is an example of uh, ossification of interspinous and supraspinous ligaments and uh, here we can see these are uh, syndesmophytes because of ossification of the endless fibrosis and this can be also confirmed on chronal reformatting overall we can see there is significant reduction in the bone density this is an example of inflammatory process involving both sacroiliac joints increased signals are noted in subarticular areas on either side predominantly on right side this is active phase of uh, ankylosing spondylitis and here we can see these are the post contrast images on fat suppression sequence where we can see there is uh, post contrast enhancement involving uh, articular surfaces and uh, adjacent intervening ligaments this is late phase of uh, sacroiliitis where we see there is uh, fatty deposition in subarticular areas and this fatty component is expressed on fat expression sequence this is an example of uh, CT examination where uh, we can see there is widening of the joint space and uh, subarticular areas shows sclerotic changes this process is uh, more prominent on left side these sclerotic areas shows low signals on T1 weighted sequence on either side here we can see there is uh, erosion of the articular surfaces on both sides while sclerotic changes are also appreciated in subchondral areas especially on iliac ends of uh, SI joints and this can be confirmed on uh, x-ray we can see sclerotic changes on both sides while erosion of the article surfaces are better visualized on the CT examination 
here we can see these are the fuzzy article surfaces suggesting erosions while adjacent of particular areas shows significant sclerotic changes here we can see there is significant sclerotic changes on both sides predominantly on left side while gradually the joint space is uh, reduced especially on left side this is an example where we can see that there is complete loss of the joint space with bony ankylosis and uh, this is 3d image which is also confirming bony ankylosis and complete loss of the joint space so we have completed our our second portion of uh, ankylosing spondylitis thank you very much assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh